Hey folks, Jamie here with Journey North. Just working on that vise. I like using the regular metal vise instead of them wood vices. I can maneuver them where I want on top of the bench. And uh, they seem just to bite better, quicker. And this is right on the corner where I like it so I can use it for woodworking, metalworking, use it as a little mini anvil, kind of whatever I need. When you use it for wood, you get these little teeth marks right here. Anytime you put wood in there. And uh, kind of chew stuff up. So I've been just kind of doing a quick, you know, redneck fix and putting putting a glove in there and tightening it down, and that that works for the most part. But uh, I have a lot of scrap leather for different projects that I do. I mean, it's always good to have leather around. Save old belts, um, old pairs of boots. This here, you get at a craft store, you get bags of it, just oddball pieces, and they come in real handy, like uh, this one here, I, I really like the color on this one, and we can take, take one of them axes and kind of do a, a wrap or something on it if we want. I think that'll look kind of nice down the road, if that's something we, we think of, but uh, I also got uh, eyelets snaps, along with a bunch of the other uh, tooling aspects of uh, leather work. So it's a little tedious. It's not my one of my favorite projects, but um, you can just do a lot of different patterns. It's just a little test piece. But you get that leather a little damp. I'll show you sometime. Kind of put whatever pattern you want in it. Of course, a leather punch. Got to invest in one of these and you got to get a high-end one. Solid and stainless. You can't get them cheapies. Get a high-end one. They're, they're not cheap, but they are well worth it. But uh, I've got a couple little pieces here, about the size of that jaw. And uh, I'm just going to put them in and uh, maybe just attach them with a piece of string or a piece of wire just to keep them in place for when I do woodworking and uh, take them out when I don't. But uh, I'm just going to start working on that. I thought I'd show you some other things I found this week. Went to the pawn shop the day after Christmas and I got this baby. And I couldn't quite... Somebody took a grinder and put their initials in there, a DB, but it's not very deep. I think we can get that out. If we can't, it's no big deal. But, uh... Found this at the pawn shop. They had $19 listed on it. Got a big metal wedge in there and it's sunk down a little bit. Horrible handle. Just it's it's real square, it's got chips taken out of it. I mean, I'm gonna save it and use it for something, but not for this. Somebody put an overstrike protector on it. Um this here is just a piece of a a gas pump, a connectable gas the yeah, reconnectable gas pump nozzle rubber that they put on there. And it's on there nice and tight. It's that Probably a pretty good idea. But when buying axes, anytime you see anything up here, whether it be tape or rubber, count on this being chewed up. Because it almost always is. And I'm going to take it off when I work on it, and uh, we'll see. But uh, I picked it up, and I inspected it, and I couldn't quite quite see anything on it, but I did see a little mark, so I went uh, over to the other aisle in the pawn shop, and I just picked up a brush. Made sure nobody was looking, and I just started scrubbing on that sucker where I thought the stamp was. It only took 10 strokes or so, and I don't know if you'll see that or not. Right there, it's in the square. It's hard to see right now, but it's a Collins, which is good news. Old Collins are great. A Pulaski. Got your basic axe on one end, and your uh, hoe on the other, grub hoe type thing. Matic, whatever you want to call that, an ad style. But uh, Collins pretty much invented the Pulaski in like 1870, a version of it. And then uh, early 1900s, firefighter in Idaho, I believe, named Ed Pulaski, welded a chunk on, and that's kind of kind of took credit for Collins' design. The Pulaski. 
find a lot of these in your western states. Any place that's got fires, Alaska, Canada. Firefighting tools, the original fire axe. Use this in for, for digging, pulling material out of the way. Also be chopping roots and chopping trees, whatever you got. But uh, Hopefully I can get some of that out of there. I always like it when I find initials on axes. It just gives a little history to it, but somebody went a little nuts with this one. That's a project. Uh, pick up a new handle for it and we'll get started on that. Like I said, they had 19 bucks on it. I also found a brand new foreign hand. Rasp. I brought him up to the counter. I offered the guy 10. He came back with 18 and we settled on 15. Nice decker, and I thought, and very happy with it. New, these are uh, for a Mexican Chinese version. What you're going to find at your basic box store, you're probably going to pay $35, $45 for one. This one's usable. It's a Collins. It's worth more to me it like that. So, uh, be a nice little piece of my collection. Something I'll, I'll definitely use. I got a I got to dig outhouse hole about every two years, every three years, somewhere in there, and this will come in handy, trust me. But uh, I'm just going to work on this uh, vice on this leather here for a little bit. So, uh, check it out. All right, originally I was going to use these pieces here, but I, I came up with a, with a new plan here. I got this piece of scrap here. It's, it's just regular veg tan leather. No dye or anything on this here, but uh, I think what I'll do, like I said, you put a little water on this, we can we can manipulate it. I'm just gonna fold it in half, put a little water on it, hit it with the hammer a little bit, and that should put a constant curve in it that'll leave a little spring action, so it'll slide in the vise, and it should stay, so I can maneuver it wherever I want, and then just pop it out when we're done. In theory. But uh, let's see if it works. Well, spit works as good as anything, right? It's still wet, so it's going to be a little pliable here. My thought is... I should just sit in there. I mean, grab a handle here and see if it'll work. Still grips nice and tight. No marks whatsoever on the handle. It's going to stay right in there. It's nothing fancy, but it works. I like it. It will do for now. I also just couldn't resist with this Pulaski here. I just had to, had to take this cut this rubber off and I did cut it off and it stayed in place because they put a nail in it as well. Well that's probably not the best thing for the handle either. So uh, let's pop it off and see what it looks like. Well actually it's not no overstrike at all on the axe end. A little bit uh, right there. Not bad nail in it, a little finish nail, but uh, like I said, just a cheap ass handle, which doesn't surprise me, these were bought by the thousand, hundreds of thousands probably for the forest service, for your wildfire guys, your hot shot crews, and they work their butts off, it's a good tool for them, but, uh, no swell on it at all, I mean there's barely any right there. So, uh, find a nice handle for it and fix it up. 
But I just had to, it's killing me not knowing what was under there, you know? Here's another piece I kind of, leather I found that I kind of like. This here's the raw side, finished side smooth, but I, I, I prefer that, that raw side, but. Maybe do something like that on one of these axes. That glare's terrible over there. Let me get you over here. There, that's better. Maybe do some. I got snaps and eyelets, but maybe just uh maybe just punch some holes in it. Yeah. Punch some holes. Then just do some uh, leather tie. That's old school. It looks nice. But, uh, my nice find for the week, a Pulaski. One of the tools of your homestead or off-gridder, I highly suggest one of these. All-purpose tools are great. All right, folks. Hope you had good holidays. Don't uh, party too hard on the new year. Take her easy.